Happy Wednesday, everybody. Um, this is going to be an exciting episode, I'll tell you that. I'm going to cover a couple of stories here and there, but for the most part, this is really going to be all about Amber Midthunder from Prey. Uh, I had a chance to sit down and talk with her for a little bit, and she's really, really, she's going to be a major, major superstar. She already is turning heads, and people are talking about her performance in Prey, and rightfully so. There's uh, there's rumors of, uh, there's Emmy buzz, I should say, there's Emmy buzz, and there should be. Uh, I wanted to chat with her about the process alone, about going into something like that, working with the director, kind of getting into the process of it, realizing the the gravity of a Predator movie, all that and more I talked to Amber about. But I will cover a couple other stories. There's a big, massive story about Marvel. They're not going to Comic-Con. That's usually where they own. They usually are the kings of Comic-Con, Marvel, with their panel. I shouldn't say they're not going to Comic-Con. They're not doing a Hall H panel. They are doing something at Comic-Con, but they're not going to do Hall H, which is usually where they do a big uh, announcement. And the pending SAG strike and a few other things are causing that. Um, John Wick is going to be a director's cut. Talk about that briefly. And Ang Lee's Hulk turns 20 years old. How about that? That and more. On the show, uh, I am getting ready to go to New York. I'm going to be in New York really, really soon. So hopefully you guys will be there. We're going to be there this Friday. If you can't be there with us, you can get us get it at the uh, a live stream, and that's thechristianharloff.com. Please make sure you head on over there. I would appreciate that, and I hope to see you there. The other thing we're really pumped about is this one. Katie Sackhoff, where I'm uh, producing this show, blah, 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 with Katie Sackhoff, and she just announced the first episode is going to drop on her YouTube channel on the 28th as well as a live show at San Diego Comic-Con, July 22nd, on the uh, on the strip there, Gas Lamp District, and it'll be at the American Comedy Company, July 22nd, from 4 to 6 p.m. You can, the same thing, you can go to blah, 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 Katie, Dot com and you can either get live tickets or you can get live stream tickets. And there's a really cool thing she's going to be doing at the end of the, the night. If you're part of the live stream, you'll actually, she's going to take the phone with her and you can travel with her from San Diego all the way back to um, LA and she'll do Q and A's and all that stuff too. So head on over there. It's going to be a lot of fun and you'll be supporting myself as well. Cause I'm producing that show and I'm very excited to see the guests on that show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, okay. Let's get into it. Let's talk about it. Cool. Perfect. Great. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Whether you're joining on the YouTubes, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere podcasts are found. Thank you. We hope that you leave us likes, comments, all that. Thanks to everybody who joined that live stream yesterday on the Christian Harloff and Friends channel. That was a lot of fun to do. I do try to do those. I try to do it once a day, but sometimes life gets in the way, but I've been doing a little bit more. So uh, thanks for joining me. And let's talk about, well, let's get right into this thing, because as I, as I told you guys on the live stream and everything else too, that I... I'm so thankful to all of you and everything that you do with this show and what you have done. We just hit 81,000 subscribers on the channel. We're constantly building. We're building up the the episodes and uh, the, the likes are coming in more. The comments are coming in more. And there's a lot of support in the channel. And I constantly get, I just got somebody yesterday said, hey, man, for the show, I wanted to check it out. And I, and I got, um, and I got one of the sponsors. I got Green Chef. So I don't, that person's going to love it. So. When you're able to, and you can sign up to those sponsors, please do so because it's uh, it's it's very helpful, and might as well do it because I mentioned it. I was doing Green Chef. I was uh, my my family has been out for the last couple of days, and I've been cooking up a storm. Green Chef. I did like shrimp. I did a, the Mediterranean dish. I did all that stuff. It's really really great. And um, yeah, I'm going to tell you about it right now, and then we'll get right into these stories. Green Chef, baby. Green Chef is awesome. It makes eating well easy with plans to fit every lifestyle. Doesn't matter what your lifestyle is, man. You're just looking to eat more balanced meals. Green Chef offers a range of recipes to suit your preferences. You can fill up with Protein Packed. It's their newest collection of recipes fit for a high-protein dietary preference. 
You can choose from three weekly menu items, including at least 40 grams of protein per serving. You can choose from 50 plus weekly menu and market items with the option to mix and match meals from different dietary preferences in the same box. If you're craving more servings from a favorite recipe, you can double the portions in your weekly order just one click. It is the number one meal kit for eating well with dinners that work for you, not the other way around. Green Chef has options for every single lifestyle. It does not matter. It's great. It's uh, it's 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 so good, and I love Green Chef because I've been getting and, and you can turn to di- different meals. I've been making like this stir fried for a bit since we started with Green Chef, and I, uh, it's it's I look I, I lick my chops every time it's coming around. I know oh, I can make that stir fry. Green Chef, you're reducing your food waste by up to twenty three percent versus grocery shopping. Welcome the spring season with delicious, easy to follow recipes that support your healthy lifestyle, and it tastes good too. Fact. Try balanced, crave-worthy meals fit for all dietary needs. Bring more flavor to your table this May with Green Chef's wholesome, elevated recipes. I take the chicken, put it in a stir fry. I love all the different, I mean, it's so good. Their chicken is no joke. You know what I love about Green Chef also is it gives you the ability to choose. You want all chicken? Get all chicken. You want all beef? Get all beef. Go to greenchef.com slash thing60, but use that code thing60 and get 60% off plus free shipping. Again, greenchef.com slash thing60. Use that code thing60, get 60% off plus free shipping. Green Chef, man, the number one meal kit for eating well. Green Chef, I'm telling you, give it a shot. And please do what, um, what a few of you have done. Tag me on Twitter, tag Green Chef, let them know. Helps out the show tremendously, but it also will help you out. You will not regret it. Green Chef is fantastic. Their food is so good. Um, all right, let's start with this. Let's start with the the, the first thing is this Comic-Con story. Marvel, skipping Comic-Con Hall H this year, 2023. From Dark Horizons, following a major splash at Comic-Con, Marvel Studios will reportedly skip its Hall H presentation this year, according to The Wrap. It's still going to have a presence on the convention floor, Marvel often uses the panel to offer first looks at upcoming movies and shows, but the studio currently has multiple productions on pause due to the due, due to the writer strike, with Blade, Thunderbolts, Daredevil, and Wonder Man all paused. Then there's a the potentially looming actor strike. If SAG is unable to reach a deal before the end of, the, of Friday next week on a new na- labor contract, it could order a strike as early as the first weekend of July. If it goes forward, actors would not be able to do any promotional work for their films and TV shows as part of the labor stoppage, impacting the rollouts of films like The New Mission Impossible and Barbie along with Comic-Con, which are all about promoting upcoming works. Marvel is not the only one skipping. Universal and HBO also considering sitting it out. Wow. Um, so this is this is massive. This is massive news. Because you kind of thought it, we, and I think if you guys watch, I don't know if you watch one episode of Big Thing, if you watch all four, but on Fridays on Capes and Cows, we talk a lot about Comic Con stuff, and I even think we talked about this with Roxy on the um, on the Thursday show. This is a thing that we kind of saw coming. That if there was this strike, if it was going to happen, if all these potential uh, delays and things were happening, studios were going to pull out of it. Now, there's still going to be a presence. Someone said, well, do you think they'll cancel Comic-Con? I said, no, they won't cancel Comic-Con because, as they said, they have display stuff. They have comic book people there selling uh, merchandise and toys and, and and all that type of stuff. And comics, you know, it's, it's essentially what it was. There will still be parties. I don't know how many actors will be there doing that, but I wonder what the, what what are the rules for people that are out there doing stuff like that? What are, people, what are the rules about people doing podcasts in general? You know, just in general. So... That's a curious thing too. Like the guests that that come on to shows, or you look at somebody like like Michael Rosenbaum. Like, if he has guests on, can they talk about anything movie related? Not really. What's like? What are the rules? I don't think anybody really knows it yet. So that's an interesting thing to find out. But as far as Marvel goes, it's it's a big it's a big big move because they are usually the ones who have the most um, buzz. So I think it's smart for DC at the moment and Warner Brothers to not say anything just yet about not going. Because if somehow the SAG strike does not happen, which I still don't, for some reason I don't feel like it's going to, but if it doesn't happen, um, Warner Brothers could now own it. Could be the ones that are the, uh, the talk of the town. 
because who else? Because there's no there's no Marvel vs. DC showdown anymore. It's just going to be DC, and they'll be the ones who are, are kicking ass. Um, or nobody goes. Interesting. I don't know. What do you guys think about it? You think that this is a sign that more studios are going to drop out? There's not going to be any presentations whatsoever. It's going to be just a, you know, people hanging out in San Diego type thing. No big, no big massive Hall H events. I mean, somebody will be in Hall H, but it won't be like it normally is. So I'm very curious to hear what you guys think. Make sure you comment. Let me know. All right, let's get to the, the next one. I want to talk about this. Ang Lee's Hulk, 20 years old. Again, Dark Horizons. Today marks the 20th anniversary of Ang Lee's Hulk. This was yesterday, I guess. A movie widely dismissed as the time with mixed reviews, praised by critics for its ambition and style, but criticized for its lack of action and visual effects. Hulk came just a year after Spider-Man, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, and has swung into cinemas to great success. Just a month after Brian Singer's X-Men 2, which also drew rave reviews, the audience was ready for Hulk around the same lines, but they got something much more experimental, a dark and often introspective psycho, psycho thriller of repressed trauma, bad dads, and dangerous genetics. The story mashed up Freudian tropes, Greek tragedy, and a dash of PG-13 Cronenberg body horror. I think this guy likes the movie a little bit more than I do. Um, so anyway, it's uh, I guess some people have liked it over the years. This guy certainly does. Who's this? Garth Franken? Garth Franken loves it. But I, I'm, not a, I'm not a big fan of that movie. I try to watch it again, too. It's There's one pretty great i mean it's there's parts of it that are okay but the problem is that the stuff that they do with the the big action and everything else too the stuff with the dogs was was fun and the stuff with the tank was it's okay I, I actually don't think the story was very good um i'd probably have to revisit it again i saw it I, five six years ago but ang lee i mean you know, really good filmmaker doing hulk was an interesting choice at that point right so people, i remember people being hyped about it. i certainly was hyped about it but i was i was bummed about it when i saw it as well too it's, i think it's like fairly fairly dull if i remember correctly um i did i did see it when the hell did i watch it i felt like i watched it five years ago maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm making that up but i can remember maybe i just saw clips on youtube i maybe i do have to go check that movie out again i don't know but i just remember not liking it i i, I like the incredible hulk a lot more than most people I think it's a really good movie. It's really, it's. It, I like watching it. I like rewatching it. I saw it a couple times in the theater. I like the music. Um, I do think it's an underrated movie, but not everybody agrees with me there. Um, all right, next one. This was an interesting article that came out. Uh, Chris McQuarrie and Christopher Nolan both talked about the dangers of AI. AI, you start seeing it everywhere now, right? So the Mission Impossible films have dealt with various threats over the years, and the upcoming Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 is going to deal with one that's very current, and that's artificial intelligence. The rise of the likes of Midjourney and Chat GPT in the past year has raised obvious questions about humanity's future with technology. However, the new two-part mission was conceived five years ago, making this a very wary timeline on the part of writer-director Christopher McQuarrie and star producer Tom Cruise. Speaking with Collider this week, Macquarie said they were having the earliest conversations about the film's threat back in 2018. When is that all? That's when the AI idea came up. Macquarie says, We've done nuclear threats, we've done chemical threats, biological threats. You did the rabbit's fool, and God knows what the threat was. In trying to keep it fresh, we were looking for outward. And the big conversation I had with Tom Cruise very early on was technology, information technology, and what now everyone is talking about is AI. He adds that the likens, he likens the new films to the Cold War films in which the threat of the nuclear annihilation was very real, a very present thing, and you didn't need to set up a threat as you felt it. Here, though, it's the threat of this new kind of tech. I felt in the zeitgeist this anxiety about technology and what and how technology was beginning to influence our lives, and how do we take that anxiety that the audience is bringing to the movie and give them a release? That's what the movie boils down to. Um, he also says that the upcoming second part will go even further and wilder with AI fears. So, I mean, it keeps going. A lot of people have been doing this, by the way. And there was something I just saw, what was it, recently? No, it's crazy. There's some stuff. A lot, what was it something recently? I just saw some AI thing. Is Everybody's kind of going after the AI um, movies. Oh, it was that the new uh, Gareth Edwards movie is AI also. So, yeah, there's a lot of people doing that. And I feel like we're in the kind of the early stages of, of Skynet, man, Matrix. Like, uh, you know. Two, three hundred years from now. I mean, they, we told you. I mean, they made movies about it in like the 1980s, and you guys, you didn't pay attention. You still developed the program. You said, nah, it'll be all right. 
Because I remember being a kid, and I think I was like, I don't know, fourth or fifth grade or something. And I remember the story. I can't remember the sh what the short story was called. But it was like a short story, and it was a futuristic story. And they were talking about how the family wouldn't go to the grocery store because all they had to do was go to this screen, push buttons, and then someone would deliver. And within seconds, someone would deliver the um, groceries to your house. And I was like, oh, my God, can you imagine that ever happened? And it's Amazon. I mean, that was like, what, 30, 25, 30 years ago, whatever it was. And um, and I remember just thinking, yeah, that, that was so crazy back then. And, and I remember, I was like, yeah, oh, my God, can you imagine if that, like, ever really happened? And, like, these things that continue, there will be self-driving cars. There will, obviously, there are now, but they're just not, they, they're going to perfect them is what I mean. There's all these things that are going to keep developing, and eventually AI will probably drive the damn cars. And then the question is that the AI is in a mood and goes, yeah, I'm going to drive this asshole over a cliff. I'll be all right. So it's, yeah, it's scary. It is. And that's what that's, it's like we've predicted our future. I feel it. And, you, and you're nah, it's just science fiction. I don't know, man. People have been scared about this shit for a while. I mean, it's, it's, it's fascinating, fascinating um, technology. There's no doubt about it. I, I would be lying to you if I didn't tell you I didn't try a couple of the art pictures or the, uh, you know, the, what else? The, the, I t there's a program that I use sometimes, and it says, like, do a little description for AI. And I say, write, write, write this and see what they say. And it comes up with something interesting. So, yeah, uh, we're all doomed. It's the truth. I'm sorry to tell you. Um, all right, let's move on. All right, one more story before we move to the Amber Mid-Thunder interview. John Wick 4. Director's cut. So the director, Chad Stileski, says that he's confirmed he's, done, he's almost finished the director's cut, and it's close. It makes the movie almost three hours. And it made almost $432 million worldwide. The title came to digital the other week, and now Disc, and speaking with Comic Book Movie to promote the disc release, he was asked about the reports um, that it was originally a longer film. And he said, I've been working on a director's cut the extended cut, which we've almost finished. There's no, there's another like 10 or 15 minutes that we put back in there. We cut a big chunk out of Berlin, a whole character called the Frau, which is a pretty funny scene with John, and another scene between him and Tracker, and a few other scenes that we put back in. There's stuff that we take out because it doesn't fit the pacing, and I think the stuff is super quality, and I love the choreo, I love the characters. It just, as a whole, it changed the pace of the film. I didn't think I could get, you know, two hour and 30 minute film in there, and it felt slow. I think we got away with it um, because it felt driven. I felt like it was pain purposeful, and I didn't want to upset that pace, and it has to go. It has to go. Um, look, if, if you're able to do it, and that movie's very successful overall, if you're able to put together a director's version of it, and it doesn't cost the studio that much more, and it already made the amount of money that it did, and they can make some some more money to try to see if people want to see the extra footage, yeah, take the shot on it. The movie made half, almost half a billion dollars, so uh, off of like a $100 million budget. So this, this I understand what they're doing. Plus, this is the fourth movie, and this guy has delivered a, like a very successful franchise. And he's like, I want to do a director's cut. Like, yeah, sure, go ahead. Do a director's cut. You get to cut some stuff out, 15, 20 minutes, almost a three-hour movie. Make an epic movie, sure. They want to milk that franchise for whatever they can. Plus, you know, they, they still want them to do a fifth one. They're going to do spinoffs and all that. So it makes sense. What do you guys think? Do you give a shit about a director's cut, or do you, you you're generally curious about it? I want to hear what you think. Um, go ahead. Put it in there. All right, so let's get to it, man. This is the uh, this is the interview with with um, Amber Mid Thunder. I w had the pleasure of s talking to her and having just kind of a breakdown about the uh, the the whole film that she that uh, about Prey and how she got the the role and and what's great. And I said this to her in the interview, and you'll see it. Um, I could it, it's it's easy, not easy. But I'm, I, I like to get a sense of somebody before they come in, you know, before they sit down and start talking. Like if someone, and this doesn't always tell you exactly who they are, but it, 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 sometimes it tells you enough if they give you something. And what I mean by that is when someone comes in, sometimes they just sit down, they, you adjust the camera for them, you get the microphone, they just want to go into it, and they, they just talk. And it doesn't necessarily say anything against their character. It just sometimes says, I just want to come in for the interview, and, and, and then that's it. And sometimes people come in, they and they want to talk, and they have some, uh, a lot, you know, a conversation up top, and they're just, 
and she was just the second she walked in, she was looking at some of the stuff on the on the on the shelves, and she was having a, um, and we were just having a conversation beforehand, and she was, and we were just having like a genuine conversation, but we started talking about pray so much, so she was just very open about it, just talking about it. And I was like, I said, like, hate to do this, but let's 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 stop for a second because I want to talk to you about this on air because this is awesome. And she was, and she started laughing, and she was, she was great, she was great, and I'm excited to show you the interview. So go ahead and. Please sit back and enjoy the episode with um, Amber Mid Thunder. And before I do it, I also want to let you guys know, as I mentioned before, it helps out the show tremendously. Please check out both Athletic Greens and Rumple. I'll tell you a little bit about them and go right into the interview. Here we go. Our next partner is AG1, the daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. I drink it every day. I love it. And I gave it a try, honestly, because Brett Sheridan told me to. And I'm glad that he did because it's so good. I love it. It tastes good too. And it's not, I'm not a big vitamin person. I know that. You know that at this point. But to take them all in one shot, put it in a water bottle, shake it up, that's it. I drink AG1 before my coffee. And I take, I take it. It gives me a little boost to energy. And then I'm ready to go. And it makes me feel unstoppable. I am ready for the day. I love it. It's really great because I'm not, I'm, I'm telling you, it was very hard for me. Everyone's like, you got to take this vitamin. You got to take that. You got to do supplements. You gotta, no, thank you. Give me one. Everything. One shot, done. And it tastes good. Might look green, hence AG1. It tastes yummy. I'm always looking for life upgrades, which is why I've come to love and trust AG1. That's why so many of you trust AG1. That's why I get notes all the time. You guys are trying it. Just just did it. Love it. Re-upped. Doing it again. I keep getting it over and over and over, and that's why they've been so associated with this show. It's delivered to you every month. It's been very easy, super easy to make it a daily habit for me. And get those travel packs. I'm going to be going on the road soon, and I'll be taking that with me. If you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. You have to go to drinkag1.com slash big thing. That's drinkag1.com slash big thing. Check it out, baby. I'm so glad we're with Rumpel, man. So glad I keep getting DMs and uh, and and ats and all that stuff. People telling me, you, you were right. I love Rumpel. And I, somebody said, you know, I got one to help out the show, but I didn't realize, like, I, I'm probably going to buy more because I love them. And and, they, I, and if it wasn't for you and your show was just trying to help your stupid ass out, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have done it. I'm glad that I that I did. And I'm glad they did. Rumpel's on a mission to introduce the world to better blankets. They're made with durable, sustainable materials, and they're built to last. They recycle over 5 million plastic water bottles a year. They are B Corp certified, climate neutral, and they donate 1% of all their sales to environmental causes. I love these um, blankets because they don't fall apart. You can take them, to a, I take them to a soccer field and sit on them there. You can take them camping, and then they have blankets. You can just curl up on your couch and watch movies and TV with. I have a bunch of them that I do all that stuff with. They have over 135 unique designs, and there's a blanket for everybody. Yeah, they're not just for outdoors. They're everywhere. You can do it for everything. It's great. You just want to – you want you got an outside area. You want to curl up and just look at the stars? Do that. No? You just want to watch TV? Do that. It's the best. They have cozy hemp, fleece, Sherpas, everything. Now – Go to rumple.com slash the big thing. Use that code the big thing at checkout and you get 10% off your first order. Rumple.com slash the big thing. Use that code the big thing. We're being very serious right now. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I if you remember last last year, I you know how much on this show I've talked about Pret, and it's one of my favorite movies of all time. And then they announced Ray was coming out. I said, All right, let me see. And then I told you they did it. Went back to basics. They went, then they had the predator versus a kick ass person that the predator should not have messed with. And that kick ass person is here today, ladies and gentlemen. I'm excited because this is a movie, this is a movie that people should be paying attention to. This is a movie that if you have not seen it, please see it because of my guest today. Amber Hello. Midthunder is there. Hello, how are you? It is I. It is nice to have you here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. We were talking about it before we went on air, and, and I told you that what I loved so much about this movie was the this the fact that it was, I mean, simple in the idea that you don't need to go this big, grand scale, 
that a lot of movies, I think, in, as the franchises keep going on, mm -hmm. they rely on CGI. They rely yeah. on these big, we need a big action piece there as opposed to the chase mm -hmm. and this kind of like almost horror mm -hmm. feel to it. So is that one of the main reasons that you kind of got involved in it? Like when you were auditioning for it, how, how like, tell me the story about how you kind of got involved in it. No. No, no. <laughs> not at all. Nope. Okay. Uh, wish I could say yes. Yeah. Um, no, I, you know, I did not know that this was a Predator movie and I had not even seen the Predator wow. movies at the time that I was auditioning for it. And, you know, obviously didn't watch them because I didn't even know that I should be watching them. Um, so no, it was really just, I mean, I think that there were like two really big factors in it for me, which is that, um, you know, Dan is so great yeah. and I knew, you know, that it was like a 20th century movie and I knew that it was about like period piece, um, indigenous people and, mm -hmm. and, you know, Comanche girl. And I was like, that's so weird because studios never want to touch this stuff or mm -hmm. tell, you know, focus on these people. So it's like, it's just suspicious. Um, and I knew that Dan was there and Dan is just like so great, you know, yeah. and. Um, I love 10 Cloverfield Lane and, you know, he did Black Mirror and just all this yeah. stuff and he's so cool. And so that was kind of really everything that I knew for like a year. <laughs> yeah. Did you, had you met Dan before that or it's just as no. you're auditioning, you kind of met him? Yeah. yeah. We met over Skype before Zoom was cool. Okay. <laughs> um, Pre-pandemic, I had auditioned for this. Okay. Um, It was like, you know, it had come under like a code name and I had like two scenes that I didn't even know like what, you know, mm -hmm. They were in the movie, kind of, um, and that was, and we had like a Skype audition, and it just kind of like, I think there's just something that happens when it's like you put on, uh, like you know, a skin, and it just kind of like it just feels good and yeah. it just fits well. Yeah. And even though I didn't have any information, it just that kept happening where it was like, oh, this just feels good. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it was the same thing when I met Dan. I was like, oh, okay, this even over Skype, I yeah. was like, oh, there's something here um that's really working and that's really flowing and then you know the pandemic happened and it went away and i didn't remember it and my manager called me and he was like hey that movie is back and i was like what <laughs> and he was like you know that one the movie the da -da -da. and he was explaining it to me and i was like i'm so sorry i don't did you really know what wow. you're talking about i had no idea what he was saying wow because it was so me. long ago yeah it was so yeah. long and i just you know i had worked on other things and i was yeah. like i don't know what you're talking about um and he was like you know dan trachtenberg this one that it you scabbed over that and i was like oh okay oh it's bad oh and he was like by the way you're testing for it next week wow and i was like oh my god um and then so yeah and then that was i think it was like two days after that that he yeah. was like also this is a predator movie uh and so it was a very like compact it was a lot of information really really quickly yeah we'll go back to that though so you find out it's a predator movie and you said you hadn't seen them before so no. do you do the research like right away or do you wait do you go do you do the movie and then watch the predator movies how's that work no if i remember i immediately watched okay. them um because you know i felt like i mean i i I don't even know how much Dan and I talked about it in the audition process because it was so quick. I mean, once we were going, obviously, there was a lot of conversation about, like, I had seen all the movies and we talked about kind of, like, where this movie fit, like, tonally mm. and, and taking the, I think, DNA of what was great about the other movies and then infusing that into what we were doing, but then also being intentional about you know creating something that is different i mean obviously like even the title is a standalone title mm -hmm. it's not like predator five or right. something like that so i think that that was also a big part of you know what we were kind of like shaping and creating in the process of you know telling the story and making this movie yeah it's the most like the first movie too by the way like is and what i really loved about the first one is why i love this one as well mm -hmm. too because it's just it it is it's, it's and it's it's the the message of kind of self forbearance what, what you what you can do, what you, what the human spirit is really mm. capable of, you mm -hmm. know, and because you see what she has to go through mm -hmm. and especially at that time where she's not, she's not, you're not supposed to be the warrior. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then the fact that she is the warrior, mm -hmm. the one who's able to, to do this. So is that, I mean, I, I'm assuming that's one of the most attractive things about this role. I think so. I mean, I also hadn't, I should mention, I also had not read the script at the time that I had auditioned. Oh, really? Um, no, okay. I read the script after. So it went like I had my initial audition, didn't mm -hmm. know anything. And then the pandemic happened. And then I came back, did, they were like, you're going to test for it. By the way, this is a Predator movie. Oh, by the way, here's the script. What was the audition then? Um, it was the scene. I mean, they're very different now yeah. than what they were at the time, but the bones of them are pretty much the same. It was the scene of me and my mom 
in the teepee, mm-hmm. who, you know, is played by Michelle Thrush, who I love. Shout out, Michelle. <laughs> um, and uh, and then the scene of Nadu and Tabe by the fire after he comes back from the with the lion. Mm-hmm. So it's those two scenes. Okay. Um, and we did them in English originally, and then at the task we did them in English and Comanche because he wasn't sure what language the movie was going to oh, be in. Okay. Because he wanted to do it originally in all Comanche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that portion of it, though, yeah. Which would have yeah. been, yeah. you know, very cool. And that's why we have the Comanche dub. Yep. So, no, I really didn't know anything about it. I just knew what I had on the piece of paper. Okay. I watched it. That's how I watched it, by the way, too. I thought it was. It was oh, cool. And it was, um, yeah, I just, it, it, the authentic the mm-hmm. feel and just it's it is it's just it was so it was so raw mm-hmm. it was just so raw and like so tell me about though after the movie comes out at the time did Dis- is disney had disney bought fox when before the before you got this role do you know yes okay they had so so because the, then it comes out on hulu and yeah. it's and obviously i think a lot of eyes were on it because it was such a big release mm-hmm. for hulu and i remember everyone kind of because you know, as you said, it's called Prey, but then the Predator yeah, yeah. aspects. Of, it's a new Predator movie, and people start. Well, of course, it is yeah, a Predator movie. Yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> right. And the social media starts blowing up. What's yeah. the new Predator movie? How's is this another one? Are they trying to just you know milk it? And it's like, no, they're not. This yeah. is a, this is a Predator movie. What's the reaction like after? And and there's always the nerves of how people are going to take mm-hmm. this movie. But what's that like? The premiere, you know, as far as when they put it out there, and like, are you nervous? Do you not pay attention to that stuff? Like. Um, I think I don't really, I mean, it was weird because there was not like, you know, we had the, we had a big premiere, but it wasn't like the, the theatrical release we didn't get. And mm-hmm. so it was kind of weird to just kind of like release, you know, like to just put like a, like putting like a small turtle in a pond. Yeah, you know, yeah, just yeah. being like, survive. <laughs> you know, like you're like, I don't know what's going right. to happen to this, um, is how that felt. Yeah. Like, cause you know, on the release day, I was like, Dan, what are we going to, like, we have to do something. Like, what are we going to do? Cause we can't just like let this go into the, so we went to Disneyland. Oh, cool. <laughs> as yeah. a big group. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was really scary. Like it was, I think, I mean, it was funny to me originally, like how angry people were, I think at our, at our movie. Um, even when it came out no no like oh, uh, before that yeah, yeah like we we dan and i talked about that a lot especially like while we were shooting it was like just how people felt about the concept yeah. and the idea of making another one and then and what is it the idea that oh a woman can't fight the predator that yeah, type of, yeah, a lot yeah, of, yeah i think that there was a lot of layers i feel like there are people who were upset at like oh another predator movie what is this going to be mm-hmm. and then you know when the concept was announced i think people didn't like that of like oh there was a lot of people who were like this is just like you're trying to shove something woke down our mm-hmm. throat and that's obviously not the case nope. um and so you know very satisfying yeah <laughs> to yeah. prove people wrong but yeah i mean it was like i kind of try not to pay attention i was mostly honestly there were two things to be nervous about I think when you're like putting out a movie like this which is one that like there are people who are loyal to the franchise and you care about what those people think and I've done a few you know things that come from like a greater universe and I learned really quickly I was on a series called Legion that was Mm -hmm. a Marvel show and I remember we went to New York Comic Con again before the show had even come out and it was there that I realized like oh fans are very serious (laughs) about what they love yeah um, which of course, I mean, you're like, you know, keeping care of something that they care for and you don't want to mess it up for them mm. and they don't want you to mess it up. So there's those people. And then really to me, what I was the most nervous about was representing, you know, Comanche people and native people and native women. Well, and that was a really big deal to me because I just felt like there's not a lot of that out there. Mm-hmm. And this is the first like indigenous female action hero ever yeah um which is a huge deal and a very scary thing to i mean it's exciting um but i think carrying that responsibility also really scared me so i just wanted that to be everything i wanted to be able to step into that as fully and completely and do it the justice that it deserves yeah and it's and you, and of course when you're coming into a role like that it's like and you feel like there's like some big shoes to fill overall right mm-hmm. to what you have to do there and i think from what you're saying it it, it makes sense from the time period what she has to do and she's setting the stage to ultimately getting to where we do in the 1987 version and all that because the predator mm-hmm. has been here before mm-hmm. and this isn't the first time mm-hmm. and even though arnold's got to deal with it later on yeah you know it it, it not he did it first <laughs> that's right he did it first <laughs> um so the movie comes out it gets a great response mm-hmm. people are um are buzzing about it and what happens to this this is an audition that you had that you I didn't know what it was find yeah. out it's a predator movie see and then your life kind of changes right or does it? Does it not? I think I can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I 
don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think, I mean, yeah, I think so. I think if I like look back at it, I think it's, you know, we were shooting for like six months and then it takes like a year for the movie to come mm -hmm. out. And to, so I think that the changes have been gradual, which I'm grateful for. And, and I think anything that has kind of changed is very like external, you know, it's like my life is still the same. Like my parents are still my parents. Of my course. parents are still my yeah. friends. And that's really, I think kind of what I, I have a, I have a very interesting relationship, I think with like the, the way that my mindset views, like what is like kind of out there mm -hmm. versus like what is in here um like there's a part of me that is always i think kind of surprised when people see something that we make point blank period even yeah. though that is the point of it like because you know the process of making the movie was just so uh it was so intense yeah and so long that you know there's like a little tiny part of my brain that when people are like oh the mud pit i'm like you weren't there, <laughs> right. You know? right? Um, because the experience is just so big in my mind that sure. that's what lives overall, and um, you're locked into the role, yeah. yeah. And this is a, you're not thinking about that at the time, yeah. you know. But I mean, yeah, it's been really cool, I think, to to have this go out there and then see kind of like you know the ways that that's yeah. changed things for me. And I want to jump back to something you said though, but you're talking about like you know, you're still you're still you, your mom's still your mom, like that's yeah. like, so, no, but when you when you walked in, I automatically could feel like. You, you seem very grounded you know you seem like it's like because a lot of people can get caught up in the success of it mm. all people can be like yeah i was in that movie i kicked that predator's mm -hmm. ass and you don't seem like that to me and mm -hmm. is it is, does that come also no, i'm actually from, a huge jerk you seem real you're just putting it on you're just a really <laughs> yeah. good actress you're gonna come out here start ordering people around but um no but i what I, what i meant is though you know is that something that comes from family background because i had on um yeah. i talked to sholo Medaduena, mm -hmm. who uh from cobra kai and up yeah. blue beetle and and I've been talking to him since he was 17 years old, and he mm. said the same thing. Like his his mom was really his family was yeah. what keeps him yeah. level. Is that do you feel is that the same? Yeah, for yeah. sure. I think that like my family and yeah, I think I'm just really fortunate. That does start with my family. I think I'm really fortunate to just have like normal people around me yeah. who are just yeah. very like, you know, both my parents work in the film industry and it was never a presence in my household. Mm -hmm. Like it just was not you know like we watch movies because we love yeah. movies but it wasn't but like, it didn't bleed into your their life jobs yeah. this and did it like i just didn't even find, i had to find my way to acting on my own that's great um you know and then i was like what you guys are right how did you not yeah. and they're just like i don't know you figure you want to do it you do yeah. it um and so you know they're supportive but they never like connected what they did to what i did and and also like i think culture you know like being grounded into like i was raised with like you know all of my cultures in my household mm -hmm. and um you know having that i think is really like when you look at like the values of what those things are about and keeping that with you every day i mean i was like just in montana with my family there mm -hmm. and like it's i think it's hard to let like those things like let things in like ego and um any kind of like arrogance come in yeah. when you really genuinely stay connected to like where you come from and the people around you and who you're doing it for and who you're representing. You yeah. Know? Well, I saw that. I can't remember recently who the hell it was, but it was, it was a really big actor that would go back and, um, would just go back home and mm -hmm. go back and, and I can't shoot. I can't remember. It was someone really massive. It would go back home and just kind of chill out and get, yeah. Oh, it was, it was the Michael J. Fox, uh, documentary on Apple. Oh, oh I haven't seen it. Oh, it's so good, but it's like, okay. it's tough. It's yeah. tough to watch. Obviously everything's going, but he, yeah. but in the height of back to the future and all that, mm -hmm. he would go home. Mm -hmm. He would because of the, cause his dad, you're not Michael J. Fox, the movie yeah. star, you're Mike, you know, yeah. and you go watch the car. Like, yeah. and, and that, but that's, you need that in your life. Yeah. You really do. And so you can, you can tell just from hearing that one sentence of you saying how you mentioned that, because if you mention that, if it's in your mind and that's something as you further along in your career, you'll, yeah. you'll, you'll continue to keep that. For yeah. Sure. yeah. I think it's, I think that like, you know, I do, I think all of us, I think that to be good at, I don't think that you can like get good at, or like even making this movie, I don't think you can try to like, I don't think you can necessarily make a good movie just by trying to make a good movie right. if that makes sense i think yeah. that like you know dan i was just talking about this like dan cares so much about like he made this movie because he loves predator movies yeah. like he's there because he, it actually interests him and because he really cares about it and that's also why i do what i do and mm -hmm. i think that you have to you know really like be there because it's not like it's not always 
super fun. Yeah, <laughs> to be, right. You know, like yeah. this movie was not always super fun. There no, were moments I'm that were sure. really fun. I'm sure. But it was not always really fun. And so it's like you have to be there, I think. You can't just be there for like the end product. Mm-hmm. You have to be there because you love doing it and you love the process. And so then to me, I think the kind of like external part of it is very... I think like comes last is kind of like secondary to everything else because like I'm there because I want to be there and that's really, that's it. You know? Yeah. Did you feel, did you feel the pressure at all? Because like, this is the, you know, maybe Dan made it easy as well, the easier, Mm -hmm. but like, because like you said, like the, the locations alone, I can hear everything you're saying with the locations, (laughs) whereas I can only imagine how it's like, Oh my gosh. It's like, whether it was pretty cold there as well too. No, we were there from spring. We were there for a long time. We were there from spring until fall. Okay. So it was like nice weather when we first got there. By the time we were shooting, it was actually so hot. Okay. Um, Dan and I had like a running joke of like, Oh, is this outfit going to be better to be hot or cold in? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and they were both equally <laughs> uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was really, really hot in the summer. And then by the time we were done, um, which was like all day time stuff that we were shooting. And then by the time we were done, we were doing nights and then that was fall time. And so that got pretty chilly. So okay. we experienced all the weather. I'm sure you did. And then, but yeah, but as far as the pressure went so you didn't, did you didn't feel like there was any pressure on you or to, this lead of the movie taking the i mean i did have those thoughts in my head yeah. you know i did have those things of more i think more of that was about like oh people you know have put trust in me and people yeah. are believing in me and is that found a lot of like you know imposter syndrome thoughts sure. of just like sure. oh is this you know do i should i be here and stuff like that when you're like yes 100 percent, i should be here right it's like this internal um, battle you're having with yeah, yeah, yeah 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 which is also very i think aligned with the movie fortunately and kind of everything that she's going through of yeah. like being this person who's like so viciously confident you know in terms of when she speaks on what she is going after when she's like no I want to hunt I want to be there I deserve to be there I know that I can and then when you see her and she gets alone and she's there she's like oh my god I don't know if I should be here um and I think that's a really relatable feeling and what's important is that it's like you know those thoughts come and go and that those are just thoughts and that really it's like you're there because you're supposed to be there right. and that's like the story i think that she goes through as well as kind of also what i was experiencing to a degree um because yeah there is also that sure. thing where like i mean definitely like the terrain of where we were it was very that also felt so far removed from like shooting a movie yeah. it just felt almost like silly to think about that that's what we were doing because it would just was like you know, we'd just wake up and we'd be outside all day and yeah. we'd do this thing and I would like chase a deer or I would be, you know, hunting with my dog right, or right. stuff like that that kind of feels then just like so normal and real. Yeah. Um, and then, but there was one time I remember, um, you know, the, the clapperboard is going and I forget it was like, you know, scene 32, whatever, take mm-hmm. something P. And he went, P for predator. And I was like, oh my God, this is a predator movie. <laughs> Just had this right. moment, and his name is Perry. Yeah, and I looked at him, and I was like, "Perry, this is a predator." I freaked out, and I was just having this moment. And I was like, "Oh my god, this is so cool!" That's pretty awesome. And then I was like, "Okay, sorry guys, we gotta." Okay. Well, tell me about seeing the predator for the first time, though, on on set, though, when when they yeah. have when they have the, the because that alone, it's such an iconic costume. Yeah, and it, it's what Stan Winston didn't know that like the mm-hmm. it is um. Yeah, what what's that like the first day? It's got to like snap you in the character immediately. Yeah, hundred percent. I saw it, and um, I mean, it was like there was like whispers. Of, you know, there was like slowly people were disappearing into the yeah. tree. Everything is trees. It's trees everywhere. So <laughs> you know, there was one specific direction of tree that everybody was disappearing into, and I was like, oh, I wonder, you know, what's going on over there? And it's kind of very like, oh, nothing, nothing's happening. And I was like, okay. I don't believe you. Um, so I walk, you know, so I followed the crowd and I saw like a small huddle of people. And then the people kind of stepped back and I saw like movement in the trees. And I got closer and then I saw the suit and I was like, oh, that's awesome. Oh my God. And I looked at it and my like Nadu brain took over and I was all, yeah, I could take him. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first thing that I said Fantastic. when I saw it. I was like amazed. Yeah. And then I was like, nah, that's not hard. <laughs> that's why you got the gig, <laughs> man. Be. Yeah. Um, and it was super cool. And then I like walked up to him and then and we were just like looking at each other. And I was like, you know, because it's everything. I mean, they just did such an amazing job on it. Like 
I think that's something also that made our movie different is that, you know, it's not like tennis balls and green screens. Right. It's literally yeah. like a man in a suit out there and the suit looks so good. That's why I, that's why I enjoyed it. Because yeah. like I've been to like, so Terminator, the first Terminator is one of my favorite films of all time. And everybody loves the second film. I like the second film a lot, but I love that just gritty, raw focus on the characters, focus on yeah. what's going on. And that's what, that's what Prey did for me mm -hmm. immediately. Um, so what comes next? Is there talk of a second one? Are you guys, any anything as far as uh, potential? No. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Nothing that we can talk um, about? I mean, listen, I would do another, yeah. you know, I yeah. think I would do it. Yeah. I don't know what the plans are, nothing, but nothing, I would. Nothing yet. I mean, no, okay. you know, I fair, don't know. But fair enough. Fair enough. I um, would. I mean, I love these people. I love this movie. I yeah. love this character. So if there was, if there is a way. You would be open for it, but would, yeah. and, and you'd want Dan to come back, obviously. Sure. Yeah. Uh, um, what if? What about opportunities that that as far as coming out afterwards? Because we had we had talked. We were looking at some of the stuff that was on the on the shelves mm -hmm. and stuff. And we were talking about Star Wars and other things too. Have you had an opportunity to? You know, that, that's why I said has things changed mm -hmm. as far as your life and more, auditions. Things are coming because I could see you in any of these. I could see in Marvel. I could see in DC. Yeah, I could you. see in Star Wars. Absolutely. I mean, I I'm surprised that there hasn't been an announcement yet. To be completely honest with you. Um, I know that we're doing Last Airbender. <laughs> You're like, I don't good, know. She slept for the rest she, of the day. She just said every, every time. We talked about Prey for a while. Um, <laughs> and then she just fell asleep. And then she fell asleep every single time. But I know there's only so much you can talk about with Last Airbender. Can you talk about anything in Last Airbender or nothing at all? I don't know what I'm allowed, allowed to, to say. say. Okay. Um, but I'm really excited. I mean, I loved Airbender as a kid. Like, just obsessed. Um, and then I rewatched it recently. And, like, it's just, you know, probably around the time that I was, like, prepping for the show. And mm -hmm. it was just, like... I just, I was like, if 10 year old me or five year old me or whatever, if little me like knew that I was going to be in the show at all. And then if I told her that I was going to play Princess Yue, she would poop her pants. <laughs> like, it's so exciting. You know, yeah. like, it's just the coolest thing ever. Um, so I'm really excited. Okay. I'm excited to see it. And yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. We'll, we'll we'll move. I don't know what. Yeah, no, it's fair. I don't want to get you in trouble. Um, <laughs> but but when it comes to that other stuff too, and maybe it's just because you're busy shooting that or but too, has there been. Have you had an opportunity to meet with anybody? Marvel, DC, Star Wars? Is that something that potentially are going to fall asleep again? Just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I'm very open to that. I think that, like, it's, you know, I grew up doing, like, jujitsu yeah. and, you know, I had, like, horses and dirt bikes and stuff like that and, like, that archery and, like, mm -hmm. because the thing about this movie is that, like, even, you know, months or maybe a couple of years before I had bought my dad a set of throwing axes for father's wow. day. So like, this is just like how we live. Yeah. Um, and so I think that I've been fortunate to end up in these spaces where like, you know, I think Legion was the same. I, you know, I think this is the same that it's like, it's not just about any, it's not like, it's not just a straight drama. It's also not just like action for the sake of action. Mm -hmm. It's like, I think it, I've been fortunate to be in these spaces that really blend like people who care about their characters and their stories. And then I also get to do really fun stuff. Yeah. Um, cause I love, you know, I love writing. I love action sequences. Yeah. I love all of it. And also I am like, you know, I do love just acting. Yeah. Um, and I love storytelling and I think that it's really cool to be able to blend those and kind of go off in any direction that you so please. And so, yeah, I'm definitely, you know, I think that anything that holds those qualities is something that I'm interested in. Fair enough. Um, so I also like to ask, uh, where, what do we do as far as just think, like when you get an opportunity to relax, when you get an opportunity, are you more of a, obviously you chucking axes and at trees and stuff too. Are you going to be going outside <laughs> a lot or, um, <laughs> Or you sometimes you like to curl up on the on the couch, watch TV. You're watching certain shows, movies, both. or yeah, you're both. I'm a big couch potato. You big couch. What what um, what's some of the shows that you're you're digging right oh now? Oh my god. Okay. Well, Dan and I really. This is one of the first things we bonded over. Yeah. Was our love of Love Island. Oh my god. Yeah. He's Roxy a talks big about that. All love the time. Island yeah. fan. Yeah. Um. And we. I don't even remember how that happened, but he had bought us. We have matching Love Island hats. That's hilarious. Um, rewired is their brand, and so he bought us. I have little, we have little rewired hats, um, <laughs> because we love Love Island. Yeah. He texted me the other day, and he was like, "New UK season out." <laughs> he was like, "New format." And I, I was love like, the what relationship that, that you guys have, man. Um, you can tell you really bonded. It's yeah, awesome. He's yeah. super. You know, yeah. he's just a cool. I mean, that's what it's. I think is very fortunate to just be around 
somebody who's just like a normal nice person yeah. you know and then also is supremely talented at their job I and a love like. island fan and a love island fan. <laughs> right. um no so there's love island obviously of course um what else i just watched i was just hanging out with my parents they love murder documentaries so oh, just watch it. yeah they're like big dateline fans well tying it back into predator and everything too i'm watching that arnold uh doc right oh, now. oh yeah it's awesome and i haven't my, seen it yet oh it's fantastic um it's really it's really really um it's interesting because it's like it goes through like four parts of him like from his i don't know how much you're familiar with this story but the idea of you know what he did when coming over from austria being uh, the bodybuilder that he was, yeah. transitioning, seeing the goal mm -hmm. of what he wanted to do, be an actor. Like, yeah, right. I just can't yeah, speak yeah. English. And then he becomes the biggest movie star of all time. And they say, yeah. oh, you know, you're making millions and millions of dollars. Well, now I want to be a politi politician. Yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> he becomes the governor of California. It's crazy. Yeah. It's a crazy story. I would love to watch it. Actually. It's really, really good. Did you, I'm sure you get this, you've gotten this conversation. I'm sorry. It's a very, probably cliche conversation. But did, did, um, did Arnold reach out to you at all? Did you talk to Arnold? Have you met Arnold at all? No, none of none him. of the above. I've not interacted really? with him. Um, no, I think that it's just, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I think, yeah. you know, it's just very, I imagine, I mean, I don't, can't speak for him at all, but I feel like, I think that it, it never even kind of, I think early on it had crossed my mind, mm -hmm. but it also didn't like, I think we just got so involved so quickly for me, mindset wise, I think just so involved so quickly in the world that we were in, mm -hmm. in terms of the story. Mm -hmm. Um, and then just, you know, I was also like, I was shooting a show at the time. So yeah. it's like, I went from like, literally like finished a season of the show, had like two weeks, started the movie, went mm -hmm. back to the show immediately. And so I think it was just very like, it didn't even, you know, I think it just came and went so quickly that thought. Yeah. Um, but obviously if I saw him somewhere, I would say hi to him. I, I did have a dream about him. Really? What was when the dream? When we were in the beginning of shooting, I think it was like. That's, cra that's crazy. What was the dream? Yeah, I've never talked about this. Yeah. I remember I told Dan, and I think I told my parents, and that's it. Um, I had a dream that I was, like, walking on the street or something, and it was, like, empty. It was, like, L.A. beach town, and it was, like, totally desolate and empty. And he, like, pulled up in, like, a fancy car with a driver, and he got out, and he was, like, get in the car. <laughs> and so I got in the car, and he took me to his, like, home office. Um and it was like, it was like almost kind of like that kind of vibe mm -hmm. where it was just like, there was just like stuff at, like, I think kind of all, like his legacy. Um, and I, it was, there was like a lot of people in there. I remember it was like very like, it was like dark and, but very lively. Like it felt like deep, you know, mm -hmm. like this place runs deep. Um, and I remember he sat down and I was standing there and he like handed me like a, I don't remember, like a scroll almost, <laughs> he, like handed me a scroll. Um, and we like talked. There was not a lot of speaking in the dream. There's just a, mm -hmm. a little bit of words. I don't remember what they were. And he handed me the scroll and then I left. It's like passing the that torch. Was my dream. It was like passing the torch almost. Was, did I have whiskey and Lulu with me? <laughs> 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 the two donkeys and the horse. <laughs> it's the best is the cigar. Yeah. Uh, but that's great. No, you know what's going to trip you out mm. is that in that documentary, he had, they show when he's when he's um when he he's carries politics. scrolls it, it, very well might but he's a layer but he has a layer oh. in, when, he, when he was when he was a politician he created like this cigar lounge which was dark and I, I shit you not you got to see the oh it's part God. three and he would take the he would do meetings and stuff with people in these in this tent Shut and, up. And I swear and like they would it would be in, in where they would look and other he, people would want to get deals done with him like how come I'm not in there you get in there when it's time for you to Shut get in there up. and it's and it really it's it when you were saying that I was like oh maybe it was the cigar lounge that she that she had oh, the uh, dream about that's crazy, Isn't that crazy? I do remember thinking why is it so dark in here <laughs> yeah it was it's kind it's crazy Whoa, so is I it all like mahogany wood it, uh, I don't think so it's it like a, it was like a cigar yeah. tent is what Ooh. it was it's you should you should check it out but oh that's cool um congratulations again on this movie oh, it's you. really cool and i'm and i'm look forward i know we're gonna we're gonna see a lot more of you i can't wait so when when you do and mm -hmm. when we got airbender out there and we have when you eventually get cast in one of these marvel dc star wars movies because you will um come back and talk to us because i want to it was yeah. a pleasure talking to you today yeah thank you it really was thank you for having me guys if you haven't checked out prey what are you doing go and check it out you have to see it Amber Mid Thunder, and by the way, what an action star name! By the way, is something I wanted to tell her. Also, it's just an incredible, incredibly. My wife this morning is like, "That's a great name." <laughs> um, so, thank you once again for checking it out. Appreciate it. Leave those likes, leave those comments, and we'll see you next time. Peace. You see, I'm telling you, man, she was great. 
I think she's going to be around for a long time. You're going to see her in other big roles. She's going to pop by. It's hilarious when I was asking her about. So what about this? Like that. That was I. I like. I thought that was that was funny. Sometimes you ask people, and they, you know, when I asked Diego about Diego Luna about Marvel, he kind of looked off to the side to the publicist. Like, uh, she, she just turned her head to the side and pretended she was sleeping. I thought that was awesome. But yeah, I think I think she was she was just really um, a, a, a fun person to talk to, and I root for her because. I really enjoyed that film, and I and as I told her, I like the style that they did, and I love the she was talking about the relationship she's got with the director. They're like, they're they're really they're really good friends, um, and you can tell you can tell now from the the way that they both speak about each other. But anyway, thanks for um, checking out. Also, I wanted to thank both Athletic Greens and Rumble earlier before we went to the interview. I cannot emphasize enough that if you're able to, Athletic Greens to me is uh, you guys know I've been with Athletic Greens now for forever. And I'm so glad that they're a returning sponsor because they're just so amazing. Like they, it, it gives me a lot of energy. It'll give you a lot of energy. I'm taking packets with me to New York. And so when you get them and you sign up, it helps you and it helps the show. Anytime you're able to get one of these sponsors, it helps the show. Rumple, another one. They, they came back on because people have been getting the blankets from us because they deliver. They're awesome blankets. Get one. Get one for a gift. Try one. And let me know, please. Um, all right. That's it. That's today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Please comment, please share, please let me know um, what you thought of the interview. Don't forget, we're going to be in New York City this Friday, man. I know you might not be able to be in the city, but you can go get those tickets, man. TheChristianHarloff.com. Watch it, stream it, and it'll be available forever. So it'll be up there. You can get the stream. Myself, Mark Ellis, Martin and Corey, Brett Sheridan, Jen Sturger, Kate Mulligan, we will be there. Um, reminder, speaking of events, Katie Sackoff, she is going to be at San Diego Comic-Con July 22nd at the American Comedy Company doing a full version, a edited, excuse me, a live version of the podcast that will be exclusive to those who are there, and then it'll be edited later on, but the exclusive raw footage will be there, and you can come check it out with a special guest and then you can check out the live stream over there as well with Katie. So make sure you go over to her YouTube channel and subscribe. Um, yeah, man. So that's it. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I appreciate you. Thank you to Amber. Thank you to all of you. And subscribe to podcasts and all that stuff. See you on the flip side. Peace. <laughs>